name's Mary Jensen and I'm a human behaviour specialist and today I'm going to be on the um, Prosperity Show with a fantastic facilitator, Prosper, and I'll be talking about the differences of human behaviour and understanding the different types of people that are in the world to help you do better business, better relationships and have a much better life. I'm looking forward to you joining us. Thank you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've brought you the human behavior specialist herself, Mary. Mary, how are you doing this morning? I'm fantastic. And thank you so much for having me here with you today to be able to enlighten and help your viewers grow. Absolutely. Well, as you would notice, um, the people in the audience are people that are, first of all, growing their businesses so that they have a better existence, and also they can enjoy working in their businesses. But if you don't change your thinking, you can't change your life. So basically, people like Mary, that are human behavior specialists, work with, first of all, human behavior, as in the people we work with, the clients we deal with, and also the families that we emanate from because without the people around us, we can't do well, all right? So if you wanna be a good leader, you wanna succeed in sales, it's all about relationships. It's all about knowing what the next person is doing, feeling, saying, thinking, or being. So this is when people like Mary come in and we just really wanna tap into that part of um, you know, um, our nature as we are social beings, but we tend to forget that the moment where money is involved or feelings or emotions are involved and it clogs our judgment. So Mary, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to continue with this introduction. You let me know what it is that um, you've been up to and uh, tell us what it actually means to become a human behavior um, specialist. Thanks, Prosper. I'll give a bit of a background here so that you can understand my journey of how um, this all manifested, began. Yeah. So I'm one of eight children and I moved out of home when I was 15. Um, we had nothing in our house and my dad was an alcoholic and I wanted to move out of there and start a life. I didn't want to live in any way with no money and I didn't want to live a life like I'd lived in my childhood or have a family to live in that space. So I moved out of home at 15 and I started working in accounting as a junior office clerk. And by the time I was 20, I was a finance manager. And by the time I was 25, I was a financial controller. So if you think about my friends that went down the path of, uni path of university, they were now coming out of university with their accounting degrees. And I was already at the top of finance in Australia. I worked for some really big ASX listed companies like Robert Bosch and PPG Industries, Gainsborough, Gainsborough Hardware, who were owned by a mother company called GWA and I ran around in that space for about 30 years. What changed my career path was the last eight years I worked in mergers and acquisitions. So a lot of people will call that M&A, mergers and acquisitions. In mergers and acquisitions, after I, we bought the companies, after that we bought the companies into our big conglomerates, there was a lot of compliance, a lot of regulation and melding the teams together. And it was my task to meld the teams together. And you can imagine we're bringing in people from businesses into our business that aren't used to rules, regulations, compliance. And as well, it, it was a real human behavior playground because we had the best of the human behaviors and the worst of the human behaviors. Emotions were high. It was my task to um, buy, encourage buy-in from the staff we wanted to keep and also encourage buy-out of the staff we didn't want to keep. So you can imagine the, the emotions, the uncertainty, everything that you can think of in human behavior was, was in there at these stages. And that sparked my interest in human behavior and personal development, not for my own reasons, but to become better at doing my job. I, one of the things that I pride myself for, for forever is being a gap analysis type of a person. So at that point, I realized my gap was in helping the human behavior of all these people be managed to help them make the best decision for them and help the company 
prosper. So I started to retrain in human behavior to do my job better and I actually loved this side of it so much more than I loved the finance side of it that I decided to start my own business in this space. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that is a profound, um, you know, background, especially coming in from corporate. And I can actually imagine the animosity that's happening and the insecurities that are happening when a company merges, you know, the top brass would have, you know, you know, you know, um, gotten to terms with what's happening and their jobs are secure. But when it comes to other people coming into a different culture, a different setup, they feel threatened because they now don't feel like, you know, whatever they were holding on to in the, in the name of the company is now just being thrown over and some other person is now becoming their boss. And obviously there's a lot to deal with there. And I'm really happy you had that sort of first hand experience. It wasn't off of a textbook. Um, you know, learning how people yeah. think or how people blink and it means something else. All right. So <laughs> in, in all of that um, stuff, you were growing personally yourself. Tell me why it's really important to become the person that can handle those things instead of just, you know, like I said, a textbook, um, you know, coach or a textbook, yeah. um, you know, professional. That's a fantastic question. Prosper because there was two things going on at the same time. The first one was to become better at my position, to do my job better. The second one was my personal journey. In my personal journey at that point in time, I was not living. I was an extremely successful, ambitious person. I was had this massive, massive to-do list and I was each and every day ticking off the to-do list. And as I ticked off the things at the top of the to-do list, like many, many people that live today, there's more adding to the bottom of the to-do list. So even though we're completing tasks at the top of the to-do list, the to-do list is growing because, you know, there's a lot of us that are high achievers, extremely ambitious people. And I was always looking at the career and the money because I didn't want to be, you know, like my family was. That was a real focus for me. In doing that, I was missing out on living life. I'm, I got married in this time and have three wonderful children that are now 19, 20 and 21. So they grew up through this period where I was very focused on career and growth and, and wealth growth. And even though I was at all their events across the time, I wasn't present. I hadn't learnt how to be present. I hadn't learned how to be with a person. And, you know, when I was at their birthday parties, I'm thinking of the next deal. I'm thinking of the next thing on the to-do list. I'm thinking, and I wasn't with my children. So the transition through that has been magnificent. And the wedding that was on the weekend, I mean, I was crying, I was laughing, but all those things weren't present before because I was always busy with my thoughts somewhere else. Whereas on the weekend at the family wedding, I was present with everybody I was with. I, I now know how to be with people. So while the journey was changing my career path, it was also changing me in a great way. So I'd shut my feelings down. I'd shut my feelings down at a, at a very young age to be able to survive in the family um, with the situations going on in the family. And I'd kept that shut down for many, many years, which what do I mean by that? I mean that when bad things happened or things that made me feel bad happened. I put them into a box and I shut the lid and I put them into a box and I shut the lid and I repeated this and repeated this and repeated this until I was going through the transition of redeveloping myself, learning about human behavior, learning about feelings, learning about being present, learning about changing your thinking. Then all of a sudden my Pandora's box exploded. So my children tell a little bit of a story that mum never ever cried. Mum never ever cried. Then mum started crying and she never, ever stopped. <laughs> but that's not true because I'm not crying now. But it was a swing of the pendulum. I had to, I had to come back through the emotions to then get, come back to find an equilibrium where it's a great place to be that I can access my emotions when I want to and when I need to and I can also step up in business and be that direct person when I want to and I need to. Absolutely. Well, you 
are raising so many valid points that I really need to unpack here. You know, when you're starting up maybe in a career or in business, you're really told to be a certain person, all right? And you're supposed to be with that feeling, with that, you know, being a people pleaser or without that sort of hurt or emotion involved. Because remember, when you're merging companies, what's happening there is benefits, um, security that was there with that person, all of that gets wiped off and they're rewriting their contracts, which they had promised their family. So you're dealing with that too. And you have to do it with a straight face. Now in business today, it's all about being authentic. It's all about, you know, really, really expressing your emotion. What do you, what do you feel about, um, you know, people still trying to go into business with that iron face um, and not really showing who they are. Does that catch up with them in the future? Or is it something that you really have to be professional or never have a work-life balance? What's work is work. What's life is life. That's a fantastic question and something that really needs to be unpacked. I, I believe it's so, so certain and so strongly that <laughs> each and every one of us is our own superpower. Each and every one of us is our own, you know, being in our own authenticity gives us the ability to grow in business. I believe if we're trying to put on a mask, wear a mask of some sort, not be who we are, then we can't connect fully with people. And even though there's so much um, of business is going online now, we still need that human connection. Humanity is built on connection. And when people connect with people, we've, we've had business, before, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. When people connect with people in business on an authentic basis, they can really do great business together. If you're hiding who you are, which is a lot of why a lot of the salespeople. So you know, we talk about the car salesman. The car salesman talks really, really fast. He doesn't give you a chance to get in. He tells you what you need, what you want. He doesn't listen to you. He's only trying to sell the car. That kind of person has learned. A script and to be that way that's not who that person is authentically if he takes a breath and he slows his conversation down and he gets to know you and he listens to you I remember a car salesman trying to sell me a car that was a manual car and my son wanted to buy an automatic car he didn't even take the time to, to ask us whether it was you know so he was trying to sell us something that we didn't need because he had a mask on he's following a script without actually listening to the person that is with. Absolutely. All right. So obviously when businesses start off, you know, it's usually a one man band. And then um, as they, you know, grow, you start maybe outsourcing, maybe having a VA here and there. And also you start having clients coming in that have different, um, you know, behavioral patterns. They're, you know, they're a whole different person themselves. Is it, any tools that your business uses that you know people can log on to and figure out is Mary this certain type of a person or can you just walk us through? Yes, uh, so any I'm um, extended disc qualified and I love extended disc. There's many many profiling tools. Um, there's some behavioral profiling tools and there's some personality profiling tools. And why I love e disc specifically is it's a behavioral analysis tool so it's not looking at personalities it's not looking at putting you in a box it's not looking at saying you can only do this it's looking at behaviors and it talks about the behaviors that we display which are our strengths and some of the behaviors that may be weaknesses for us so it gives us the opportunity to leverage off our strengths in businesses but if we also want to it gives us the opportunity to work on our weaknesses and and you know maybe lift them up into a strength but it's even more than that because it talks about the four different types and and I'll give you the technical terms first but then I'll give you them how I love to language them to pe to speak with people in business so the they're called the dominant person the influencer the stability person and the compliant person so that's where we get the dis d i s and c but I love to call them the um well, I like to still go with the dominant, but I call it the strong person. We all know when we meet somebody who's a strong person, who's very direct, knows what they want. They talk in outcomes. They're always talking in outcomes and they're really strong, really dominate the conversation and they want to move fast. They're a high energy person. So I call them a strong person. 
The next person is the I, the influencer. I call them the fun person. We all know these fun people. They love to talk a lot. They've got great energy. They're still a high energy person. They love to include everybody. They love to be the center of attention. They love to make sure everybody's happy and taken care of. And I call them the fun person. So they're an influencer type person. Both the combination of these two is great for sales. If you're a combination of a strong and a fun person, so the dominant and the influencer, that's a great combo if you're working in sales. The next pers person that I love to talk about is the stability, but I talk, call them the kind person. You know, we all know these kind people. They're usually somebody in business that would be in a processing role or a data entry role or an executive secretary role. The, the people who take care of everybody, they want to take care of everybody. They want to make sure everybody's included. They also want to make sure that they get things right. So they like to have um, consistency. They like to do tasks that are the same over and over again and be able to get them right, and, you know. But they, they're, they're a lower energy. They're a kind person. I liken these people to a mother archetype, you know, a mother caring, nurturing nature. And the last one is compliant, the C people. Now, the reason I changed the names of all of these was specifically because of the compliant, because my husband is one of these, and he said to me one day, you know what, I don't know if your target market would like to be called compliant. And it was great feedback. So I call these people detail logical people. They're the, the detail logical people. And we all know people like that, people that want to know the answers, want to make sure they get it right, want to know all the details, ask questions about the details. So the dominant person is a long-range view person and the detail logical person is also a long-range view person. The dominant person, the strong person, looks at the outcomes of the long range, whereas the detail logical or the compliant person looks at all the details to get to the long range. All of these components, all of these people are very, very necessary in business. There's, there's tasks that are necessary for all, all of these. So there's no, there's no greater or lesser behaviour that, that, you know, all of us should not ever aspire to be a particular behaviour. We, we, our best superpower will be to embrace the behaviour that we are mostly and, and run with that and love what we're doing, embracing our strengths and maybe working on our weaknesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, in, in the world we live in right now, people really shun their weaknesses and, you know, they, they think they, they're not supposed to actually, um, you know, or it's embarrassing or they feel like they've failed if they're not this certain type of person. So it's really good that you've, you know, elaborated it out like that. Now, what sort of difference would it make in a business if you knew what your client's, you know, structure or behavior was? Or what, 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 what sort of uh, difference would it make for the flow of work within the employees as well if, if people knew um, all of this? Or should we just rock up to work and deal with whatever and everybody has to, you know, pick up where <laughs> they're slack, where, 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 where they're not, you know? Yeah, it's a really great um, question. And in business, it's phenomenal. I work a lot sometimes in culture and do working with disagreement between um, employees. So doing a little bit of mediation. And often the mediation can be as easy as unpacking the, the disc with the two people because sometimes we misunderstand each other, especially because we're different. When we're, when we're with somebody that's like us, we understand how they think, we understand how they feel, we know sort of where the train of thought is going. But when you have two different behaviours working together, so for example, I have a I or a fun person and I have a detail logical person and they're needing to work together on a project. And the fun person says, that dick keeps asking me questions. He's always questioning my authority because the fun person doesn't like to be questioned. But that, that person's not being a dick and he's not questioning his authority. He is only asking questions and I've got a bit of a story about this one too when we went to buy a, a car for my son at the car yard so my son and I went to the car yard and we looked at the car yard and the car yard salesman was the eye he was you know talking away 
Uh, very friendly man. I really liked him. And I said to him, my husband's going to come and look at the car tomorrow, but he's not like you and I. He, he's only going to look at the detail of the car. He's, you know, and he's not a talker. He's not a talker. And he said, oh, yeah, I know those people. I can hardly ever sell to those type of people, which was interesting because when I asked him to slow down a tiny bit before, he had said that his statistics for sales work, you know, off the chart. He, he gave me how great he is at sales. And then he told me he can't sell to these people and they're about 27% of the market. So that was really interesting. Um, so the next day my husband comes along to look at the car, but he didn't see that original car salesman. He saw another salesman. And then we took the car off to the mechanic to get it checked out. <clears throat> the car was fantastic. The mechanic said to us, if you don't buy this car, let me know because I'll buy it. But we were ready to buy it. Anyway, I jumped on the phone in the afternoon to the car yard guy, ready to buy a car. And he said, oh, I wasn't expecting to hear from you. I said, oh, what, why is that? He said, oh, well, my, my car sales, my, ma my man said your husband was a dick and he, all he did was pick shit out of the detail of the car. I said, wow, that's it, really interesting. And he said he didn't speak to him at all. I said, wow. I said, do you remember I did say to you my husband's not like you and I, he's going to look at the detail of the car. And I said he's not a talker. And I said, but interestingly enough, your car... Your car man didn't talk to my husband either. Neither of those, those two spoke to each other. I spoke to both of them, but neither of them spoke to each other. And yes, my husband was pointing out the detail of the car. There's a bit of a dint here, a bit of a scratch there. But we're not buying a new car. He was only making me aware of the aesthetics of the car. I said, you're very lucky today that I'm versed in human behaviour because I'm ready to buy a car. And if I had been another person, you might have just lost the deal. Wow. Uh, yeah, so... So what you've just told me there is there's probably a lot of business that's being lost in and around all the transactions that we're doing. We've brought all these people to our websites and just because somebody just didn't understand them on that particular day, you lose that sale because yeah. you're not understanding the human behavior or what particular, uh, you know, category that person really is. So how can, how can people learn this? Because as, as, it, as it looks like, how much did that car cost? $5,000. Yeah, that would have been a $5,000 transaction of yeah. which between you and me that, yeah, that could, you know, see us off the whole month. I mean, obviously I'm just talking in terms of how it well, all it's works It's even out. more than that because I actually worked with the car salesman guy since Steve is his name. We get along really well now. And I helped him retrain in his sales perspectives from the behavior perspective of knowing the person that walks into the car yard. And it's since then he's actually bought three more car yards. So I've trained 15 salespeople for him now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Obviously, obviously, you know, you could be a mystery shopper for a lot of people. <laughs> it's pretty uh, cool. And yeah. it's really simple because it's very much knowing the, the type of person you're talking to. And as I went through those energy types before, I was, I was actually embodying that energy type. And if we can embody different energy types of the people that we're with, it actually quickly bridges that gap of no like and trust. And we, we love to do business with people that we know, like and trust. But also understanding our differences, understanding that if you're working with a detailed logical person, they're going to need lots of details to help them make a decision. If you're working with a kind type of person, they, they want to know that everybody's taken care of and, you know, they might be looking to buy a car that fits lots of people in because they want to take care of lots of people with them. And if you're working with a strong dominant person, you know that they're going to be looking only at the outcome. Is that going to give me what I'm looking for? Is that going to give me the outcome I'm looking for? They don't want to know all the nitty gritty detail in the middle. So just being aware of that gives us the ability to talk to our clients our customers in the way that they like and give them the information the way they like it and the way they need it so that they can make the best buying decision on the day absolutely this this just this last 15 minutes has been an eye opener because some people really just think in terms of who they are as a person and not looking at the other uh, person that's in front of them for them to actually realize why are they reacting in such a way only because they 
see life in a different way. So in as much as, you know, if you're going to be marketing your business, try and see the world in the eyes of your customer, try and speak their own words. That way you create the rapport and you actually get an understanding with them um, right there. Now, obviously, Mary, if people have been watching this show right now, they, you know, probably sitting at the edge of their seat or if you look outside your window, some people are probably <laughs> knocking <laughs> just so they can get all this information from you. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Mary? So I have a website, which is www.m. So it's M for Mary and then power and then services. So it's not the word empower. It's M for Mary, power and services. I've also got a Facebook page that you can look me up on, which is Believe Empower Services. Um, so both of those ways are very easy ways to, to contact me. Absolutely. I will be, you know, putting all those uh, contact details right at the bottom there. And thank you so much um, for this. Now, is there any sort of last advice piece that you might want to impart, you know, the audience? Because everybody else right now did not realize that they probably really needed to study the other person. Um, and so they're not going to be standing in front of them looking awkward, trying to figure out are they a C or D? <laughs> <laughs> The, my, my parting wisdom will be that this, using these different capabilities in business, also help us in our lives. We have relationships with everybody. We have relationships with our business colleagues. We have relationships with our clients. We have relationships with bank people. We, we also have these relationships with our families and our children. And a lot of people focus on working on their business relationships and they sometimes don't focus so much as I did, I'm guilty, put my hand up, on their partner relationships and their family relationships. Understanding the other person in all types of relationships and thinking about the other person's needs and the other person's wants in all types of relationships and becoming fluent and familiar in always doing that will help in life as a whole. It will help our businesses grow. It will help our personal relationships grow. It will help our relationships with our friends and our children grow. So being focused on the other person's needs, our needs are always taken care of when we do that. When we focus on everybody else's needs, our needs are always taken care of. So that's one, one thing that I try to share with everybody in life. Start to focus on the other people. Everything you need and want will come to you and you'll take care of the other person. Absolutely. I think it would have been Jim Ron that said, um, help enough people and you will get, um, get, help enough people get what they want and you too will get uh, whatever it is that you want. I mean, relating back to your husband uh, trying to buy a car, had you not been there to, you know, you know, alleviate that situation, that transaction would not have happened. So. Not at all because they were so disconnected. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can imagine how many, uh, how much money you're probably leaving on the table right now by not really understanding what your customer, your other relationships are out there looking for. Because at the end of the day, if you're not growing, you're dead. What was that statement you told me earlier yeah. on? Green and growing or ripe and rotting. Absolutely. And I do think it might have come from somebody like Jim Rohn, but I heard it from Joe Parnay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough, um, Mary, um, for your time, your wisdom and your expertise on this show today. And I think you've left us really green and we're going to be growing, um, you know, with this whole human behavior because we are uh, societal beings and wherever we are, even the cavemen had to live with other people. So the only difference between you and the caveman is the car that your husband drove and um, <laughs> has, has bought from that salesman right there. We really need that connection, that rapport, because people really do business with those they know, like, and trust. And if you haven't understood what the other person um, you know, is, is, is feeling or is thinking, they're not going to trust you and they're not going to do business with you. Thank you so much, Mary, for this. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here today, Prosper. I've really enjoyed being with you. Absolutely.